So you're working your fingers to the bone to get out the word about the Ebola epidemic? Well, good for you. So am I, but I'm not doing as good a job as you are, that's for sure. Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, the disaster doctor of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 500 articles on medical preparedness for any disaster. I'm also the co-author of the number one Amazon bestseller in survival skills and safety first aid, The Survival Medicine Handbook, and also the lead designer of the upcoming new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a great off-grid option to get the whole family involved in the survival mindset. This is America's favorite squawk box, TD Bird, and this guy, of course, needs no introduction. I've devoted a good deal of time investigating the Ebola virus and, like many other viruses, found little in the way of a practical cure or even treatment for the disease. Ebola has taken the lives of close to a thousand people in West African countries and elsewhere and is a suspect for a rash of sick patients arriving in airports throughout the world. One, an American originally from Liberia named Patrick Sawyer fell ill on the first leg of his flight back to Minnesota and died from Ebola. Since then, passengers have either taken sick or died after flights out of the epidemic areas. One elderly woman died in London's Gatwick Airport. A New Yorker was hospitalized with fever and other symptoms after traveling in West Africa. And a Saudi Arabian died in the hospital after a trip to Sierra Leone left him with a, quote, viral hemorrhagic fever, of which Ebola is one. The CDC reports at least six patients evaluated for Ebola in the United States. So far, tests have been negative or are still pending. Ebola made its first trip to the U.S. not by accident, but under controlled conditions with the return of two missionaries, a doctor and nurse, who contracted the disease while in West Africa. These patients are being given an experimental serum called ZMAP, and are being reported as improving slowly. By the way, a Spanish Roman Catholic priest is the first European with Ebola to be brought back to his home continent for treatment. ZMAP, named after the manufacturer, MAP Biopharmaceuticals, a company with ties to the Department of Defense, is a monoclonal antibody serum. An antibody is a protein produced in the blood in response to the presence of an alien substance. These antibodies can render these substances, often infectious germs, harmless or cause them to be destroyed. The ZMAP serum is made by first causing the infection, in this case Ebola, in an animal. Mice were the lab animals used in this instance. Combination of three separate antibodies produced by the mice were introduced into human antibodies, producing a trans-species chimera, which is then grown and purified in surprisingly tobacco plant material. A chimera is named after a mythological creature that was part lion, part goat, and part snake. Now, once infected, researchers collect the antibodies created by the animal's immune systems. Various mixtures of antibodies were used on lab animals before finding some beneficial effect in Ebola-infected monkeys. The serum appears to work by preventing the virus from infecting new cells in the body and also preventing reproduction. Unfortunately, this only worked in the lab if used within 48 hours of infection, which is reminiscent to me of the effects of the influenza antiviral drug Tamiflu. Despite this, the two Americans are showing improvement despite having the disease well over 48 hours when the serum was given. Is the improvement caused by the drug, or are these two Americans simply some of the 40% that would have survived the disease anyway? I can't tell you, but every little bit helps. As you might imagine, many African Ebola patients are begging for a chance to be given the experimental serum. Indeed, thousands might have benefited if the drug were available to all, raising old questions about who gets and who doesn't get access to medications, especially experimental drugs like ZMAP that don't yet have FDA approval. ZMAP isn't the only substance thought to possibly help against Ebola. Another medicine called Tecmira was showing some promise when the FDA halted trials due to adverse effects on some subjects. Neither have been tested thoroughly for safety, which is why your doctor won't be able to prescribe it anytime soon. It'll continue to be tested in the lab, but perhaps some testing in the field, West African fields, will give relief to the many who are suffering from Ebola right now. Hopefully, the drug will be fast-tracked by the FDA if it proves to be effective. If it works, it might just prevent the next great pandemic. This is Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, a disaster doctor, wishing you the best of health in good times 
or bad. Mm -hmm.